Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery in regards to galaxies known as quasars. So right now we're flying through the universe, every single spot that you see is actually a really really large and massive galaxy. And as you can see some are brighter than the others. And in the middle right there, that's Milky Way. Now out there we've discovered a type of a galaxy known as a quasar which sort of stands for quasi star because back in the days when we just discovered them there were these unusual star looking objects that were emitting a lot of radio light, radio emissions and scientists couldn't really explain it until they realized what they were looking at was actually something like this. It was a tremendously powerful black hole in the middle of the galaxy that was absorbing a large amount of mass and creating these tremendously powerful astrophysical jets that were kind of sort of pointed almost directly at us in this way, basically creating this really bright object. Now since then we've discovered a lot of quasars but we also discovered a lot of mysteries in regards to them. And uh, today we also know that some galaxies sometimes activate, they become active galactic nuclei galaxies and eventually turn into quasars. But some galaxies may have never done it or may become quasars later on. So today we see it as a kind of a transitionary stage. But most scientists today also believe that when a galaxy becomes a quasar, basically when it starts emitting all of this energy, it also emits what's known as galactic winds, which are these really powerful dust winds that strip the galaxy of all of the material that can be used to create new stars, and thus at the end of the uh, quasar life, what is left is a galaxy that's unable to produce new stars. And in some sense, for the most part, we also believe that Quasar is kind of like the end of life for the galaxy. And here's an image of one of the most famous and also one of the closest active galactic nuclei galaxies to us, known as Centaurus A. You can find a video about it above my head. So here what you're looking at is a composite image of the X-ray radiation coming from this galaxy. Combined with the radio emissions, uh, this is specifically from the central black hole, and this is actually why we call it a quasar or a quasi radio star. And then obviously there is the optical emissions here. Combined together, it sort of looks like this. And you can even see all of the galactic wind that's emitted here by the super powerful um, energy coming from the central black hole. In one of the previous videos, um, I talked about how much mass is lost during such emissions, and um, an average quasar loses roughly around 200 masses of the sun per year, which is um, at least 100 times more mass loss than what our galaxy, the Milky Way, uses right now when trying to create new stars. In other words, the total mass loss um, that escapes the galaxy is way, way higher than the loss due to the creation of stars. And so um, we've always believed that quasars basically are like the end of life of galaxies. And following the quasar stage, a galaxy typically turns into this really quiet, really dim object with a somewhat bright blue um, star-like object, which is the black hole in the middle. And all of this ends up in the galaxy becoming really quiet and eventually sort of dying out. I mean, the galaxy doesn't actually just disappear, but it just cannot really produce new stars. But the new research uh, that you can also find in the description below talks about this new type of a quasar that we didn't really expect existed, and it seems that we were maybe a little bit wrong about this whole concept to begin with. Using this really powerful uh, telescope known as XMM Newton, uh, the scientists from Kansas analyzed various quasars out there and they've discovered that it seems that at least 10% of these quasars actually maintain their ability to create stars even afterwards and end up in a kind of a stage that they refer to as a cold quasar. So even though originally we believe that the only way for a quasar um, galaxy to start production of stars is to experience a collision like you see on the screen, it seems that these scientists discovered that that's not necessarily true. It seems that we just didn't really understand what quasars are. They're not the end of the life of a galaxy. They actually refer to this as a kind of a retirement party. Basically, it's a transition stage when a galaxy turns into this new stage known as cold quasar, and at least 10% of the observed galaxies did that, and during this stage it can still actually create quite a lot of stars. And what's interesting is that um, the explanation for why we haven't seen more of these uh, cold quasar galaxies before 
is because we think that it only lasts for about 10 million years. And after this, the galaxy transitions into its next stage and becomes something else. And although some of these quasars will end up as these shapeless elliptical um, galaxies that have a lot of really old stars but don't produce new stars almost at all, some of them end up as something very different. And although we're not entirely sure if all of the galaxies go through the stage, what we're certain of is that a lot of them do end up in this cold quasar stage and actually, despite losing a tremendous amount of mass, are still quite able to produce new stars afterwards. This also may suggest that one day, our own galaxy, the Milky Way, may also go through the stage, if it still hasn't that is, and will end up losing a lot of mass will end up um, turning into what may be a cold quasar with a relatively large, somewhat interesting black hole region that will resemble this really, really interesting blue star, even though technically that's a black hole that's emitting all of this light. And then following this, it will end up as maybe an elliptical galaxy that is still able to produce stars. Now, we're not entirely sure when or if at all it's going to happen, but we do know that following the galactic collision with the Andromeda galaxy that's going to happen in the next 4 billion years, it's quite possible that our galaxy will experience this active galactic nuclear stage because of the actual collision. And following that, it might turn into an elliptical galaxy. So the Milky Way galaxy has a really high chance of turning into one of these cold quasars as well. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering why this is such an interesting blue object and why it looks like a blue star, it's actually because, well, this is a typical black hole that produces a lot of energy, so it does look blue, but the reason we actually see it as a blue star is because due to the galactic winds, it was able to blow away all of this dust that usually hides the black hole in the middle and sort of emptied the space around it, creating this really beautiful object in the middle. So in other words, it's actually the power of galactic winds that results in the galaxy losing all of this mass that creates these beautiful objects that we now refer to as cold quasars. So anyway, that's kind of all we know about these particular objects for now. It's still a relatively recent discovery and it still doesn't really explain a lot of other things about quasars and more specifically doesn't really tell us about whether our own galaxy is going to become that. But what is important here is that it just helps us understand the universe a little bit more. We always thought that you know, quasars are basically the end of the line for galaxies, but now we realize that we were wrong about it. It seems that it's just a transition stage. We still don't really know when exactly galaxies do officially die and stop producing stars, but we know that it slowly is happening to every galaxy around the universe. Our galaxy used to produce a lot more stars, and uh, the star formation actually peaked roughly around 10 billion years ago. Since then, all galaxies lost their ability to produce as many stars, and they only regained this ability during the galactic collision. Now, one day, maybe all of these galaxies will actually stop producing stars altogether. And that's officially going to become known as the death of the universe. When this is going to happen, we don't really know yet, but we definitely know that um, our galaxy and our universe is not increasing the speed of star production. In other words, you could almost call it, I guess, the slow death of the universe, mostly because less and less stars are produced pretty much every year around the universe, and because um, it's not really getting any brighter, it's actually dimming all across. But nevertheless, our galaxy and also our universe still has a few billion years left in it, possibly even longer, and, um, well, I guess it would be interesting to find out when exactly will it actually stop producing new stars. But until we discover more, that's really it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn more about space, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.